Hello everyone, it's me, Savvy. Where, Where am, am I? I? How is it that every time I try to relax, something happens to me? Wait, what's this? Welcome to Playa Quad Squigs. Huh. Holy shit, is that a Game Boy? The Game Boy, one of Nintendo's biggest successes. This little thing was in everyone's hands back then. Nintendo and other developers definitely provided interesting ideas and concepts, but the problem with some of these games was that they were just watered down, worse version of already existing games. Some games were perfect fits for the system, like Tetris or Link's Awakening, but as far as brand new IPs went, the Game Boy was a bit lacking. That was the case until HAL Laboratory tested one of their young developers to create a new game for the brick. Thus, Kirby was born. You've definitely heard this tale before, but I figured it's the only thing I can talk about here. Coincidentally, the only games laying down here are Game Boy titles starring Kirby. Guess I'm just fated to play these. Not that I could do anything regardless. Kirby's Dream Land. I don't think this game needs any introduction. A simple and short introduction to what would become one of the most cherished series in all of gaming. The story is quite simple. The greedy, self-proclaimed king of Dreamland has stolen all the food from its inhabitants because of course he would. So it's so up to Kirby to collect the sparkling stars, finish every stage, and do their usual stuff. This game is actually quite interesting, taking into consideration how little has changed despite this game feeling so different from the rest of the series. Dreamland introduces this game's iconic level design philosophy. It divides levels into smaller rooms where the player has to learn what type of obstacle will be found inside said level. Speaking of locals, the game is divided into four different stages. They all introduce some new ideas, making it so that the game never feels boring or samey. Green Greens teaches the player how to do the basics, even making the boss a stationary tree. Castle Lolo introduces this game power-ups, which are basically the beta version of what will later become copy abilities. Float Islands, as the name implies, is very much focused on the vertical movement and Kirby's ability to float, down to the design of the boss of that stage, Kabula. Bubbly Clouds includes more dangerous jumps and makes so that the player has to be careful with their movement, and Castle DD goes back to all of these level themes in a boss rush-esque manner to end it all with a showdown against King DD, who honestly overstays his welcome. Uh, don't get me wrong, the fight is fine, but with the guy having like free attacks and a massive health bar, this guy becomes more so boring rather than challenging at all. Beat him and become a massive hot hair balloon, thus ending Kirby's Dreamland. Wait, WHAT?! Yeah, this game is fucking insane, and that's what makes it so appealing to me. We have no idea what the hell is going on here for the majority of time, and neither did the developers. Summon Hall was very drunk one day and really wanted Kirby to multiply inside clouds. What are these enemies? What color is Kirby? Why am I fighting a fucking tree? What is this whale doing here? Crackle Jr.? Does that mean Crackle Fuck? This weird, almost fever dream-like atmosphere is what makes the game so fun for me. The game lasts around 25 minutes and in that short time you're guaranteed to have a fun time. Kirby's Dreamland isn't definitely the best game in the series, and yet, for what it is, it's a pretty charming experience. It's carefully crafted and doesn't throw anything unnecessary in this short yet sweet experience. Kirby was all that the Nintendo brick needed, with its variety, unlockable, catchy soundtrack, impressive graphics, and unmatched level of charm. Dreamland kills the first game curse by actually being good. Going back to the roots of this series has shown me that what makes me love this franchise so much has been there from the very beginning. Appreciating one's origins to see how they've shaped their future is quite interesting, I would say. Yet, I wonder how I'll get back home. There's not really much here apart from playing the next game. Pimble Land? How, before being well known as the creators of the Kirby franchise, create a few pinball games, such as Pinball on the NES, Spectacular Pinball on Commodore 64, or even Revenge of the Gator for Game Boy. So it was a no-brainer for the company to include their fresh new mascot in a genre they were quite familiar with, thus creating Kirby's Pinball Land. Diddy is back at it again. This time, he has trapped Kirby and all the Dreamland fellas inside a pinball table. <laughs> that son of a bitch. Unexplained lightning powers aside, Pinball Land is... Pinball. No fucking shit. Kirby has to travel across three tables, each one of them being named after the boss that awaits you at the top of said table. The controls are pretty great, which is to be expected since Hal has been at it for years now. You can not only move the flippers, but also shake the whole board, which might seem useless at first, but it's actually pretty great if the ball is in an unfavorable position. Every table, or as the game likes to call them, pinball lands, have their own enemies and gimmicks to make you reach the top, which I think is quite a neat thing to do. 
If you reach the bottom, you'll have a chance to recover in a similar manner to the goal game from Kirby's Adventure. Thing is, the timing on this thing is horrible. Think you need to hit when you reach the lowest point? Maybe! Even the game doesn't know! Whenever you reach the top of the table, you have to meet a requirement that will spawn a warp star and take you to the boss. These are super fun, since they all have different attacks and they're quite tricky because if you fall into one of their attacks, you might fall and have to do that sequence all over again. After beating the Penguin King, you'll be launched back at the table side screen to reach even higher scores, which makes sense considering the arcade-ish nature of this game. As per usual with Kirby games by this point, the game is really lengthy but it's a nice experience while it lasts. This game has a few quirks, like some minigames that you can play to get even higher scores. These aren't anything special, but they are quite fun. You can actually access these without a lot of trouble by inputting a cheat code on the title screen, which will actually show you this little cute cat as well. You can do the same for bosses, which shows a different cat. There's not really much else to say about this game, since it's just... Pinball. I mean, the game uses a slightly different version of Green Greens, and I'm not the same man I was a few minutes ago, and my sanity is crumbling away. For any way to throw Kirby in a new scenario for the first time, considering how adaptable Kirby is, it only made sense for the only place where they go first would be a genre that Hal was familiar with. This game isn't perfect by any means, and it does have a few interesting design choices, but it doesn't mean it's not fun. Pinball Land provides enjoyable time in a Kirby way. Now, what if that minute-long breakout minigame became a full game? Well, I'm glad you asked! Developed by Nintendo Research and Development Number 1 Department, led by Gunpei Yokoi, instead of being in the hands of HAL as usual, Block Bow is a very weird one. Following the trend of putting Kirby in weird places where they can't do shit with their limbs, comes a breakout style game for, again, the Game Boy. Funnily enough, the game wasn't even planned to have Kirby as the ball at first, as only the paddles were Kirby themed. The devs later decided that putting Kirby as the ball would have made everything more fun, and that's how we ended up with the final product. The gameplay is pretty simple. Move the panels, destroy the blocks, hit things that give you extra points, and go to the next stage. Block Ball being a Kirby game introduces a few Kirby-like aspects, like throwing a few enemies and copy abilities. Set abilities are mainly used to destroy blocks in an easier way, some by providing movement, some makes Kirby's hitbox bigger, and so on and so forth. At the end of each area, you'll be faced with a boss, who takes advantage of the whole arena to make the battle smaller and, and make everything overall harder. Completing a level with a certain amount of points will clear the borderline, clearing all of them is necessary to unlock the final area, and that's my biggest gripe about the game. The journey to reach the final boss is quite tedious, and sometimes it even feels a little bit repetitive. The game, being quite simple and of arcadey roots, has pretty basic gameplay, and when these stages are played over and over again just to reach that score, it starts being frustrating and repetitive. The game is still fun, don't get me wrong, there's many things that make these stages fun, such as a few minigames you can play to stock up extra lives, and even some events that can give you extra points if completed into a certain time window, but still. Overall, there wasn't that much to say about this game, which is pretty strange considering that the last title was definitely way simpler than this game. Block Ball was perfect for the Game Boy, simple to understand and hard to master, it's a great challenge and it's definitely one of the most refined games of this genre on the brick. With pretty great music, solid gameplay, stellar presentation, and adorable credits, Kirby did it again. He had a pretty cool game. Now, I wish there were animals inside these blocks. This is just Dr. Mario. With animals. Yeah, there's not really that much to say about this game either. It's a pretty solid puzzle game, nothing too incredible. It has some pretty cool pixel art, I guess. It has a sequel remake thingy on SNES. Huh. It's very sunset. Shit. Don't think I'll ever get back home at this rate. The only thing I can do is play this Game Boy for the remaining 20 minutes of battery. Might as well just give up now. Not that there's anything I can do about it. Although, going back to the origins of a series I love so much was fun when it lasted. And that break from busy normal life was fun. Too bad it would last forever. What the fuck? Hello! Go the Owl! From Kirby! Yes, it is I. Th how did you know I was here? Well, you have strong energy lying inside of you. You truly are a light warrior. Uh-huh. I guess it is too early for you to comprehend. Tell me, how did you end up here? I actually have no clue at all, but I guess I can cross out two things out of my bucket list. Learning you're a light warrior and meeting Koo the Owl are two once-in-a-lifetime experiences. I was actually referring to the fact that I got four mental breakdowns and played Pimple Land, but sure. Oh, 
Hop on my back then, Light Hero. I am really curious in your story and travels. You know, those Game Boy Kirby games were pretty good. Some were good, some were bad, some were... Star Stacker, but overall, pretty cool journey. And I'm back, that's all that matters, right? I, I had fun, and I'm pretty sure you will if you check out these games that I play today. Well, all that being said, Savvy out. Savvy's back, bitches. <laughs> Let's go, that's like top 10 moments in Savvy the Gamer history. Savvy just reappearing out of nowhere. I hope you enjoyed this video because it's like a new style for Savvy, like more fine comedy, a different editing style. Um, huge thanks to, again, Mikel for making these authors. You saw them during the Kirby Dreams play. Which, speaking of which, uh, making content after the Dreams play, that is why it mainly took so long, because I thought that the Kirby Dreams play was gonna be like a smaller, fairly smaller project. But once I actually got approval from the big developers to, you know, showcase the games, um, you know, uh, also got some of the, the bigger YouTubers, bigger creators, like Meteors, met them and stuff. I was like, how do I even follow this up? How do I even make a video after this? This is absolutely insane. I cannot really do something after the Dream Display. I was planning on doing JoJo retrospectives, but making a JoJo video right after a Kirby one. Like, I've gained so much attention from that Kirby video that making a JoJo one would have been absolutely kamikaze. Speaking of which, thank you so much for the absolutely positive reception that this video had. Uh, update on the channel, a new video is coming soon. Uh, I've teased this on Twitter, a lot of people already know, this will be about Kirby's Dream Display. Uh, fuck, I mean, Kirby, Kirby's Dream Buffet. Uh, but, um, there's something bigger, so make sure to stick around to watch that video till the end. This is, uh, I'm cooking something, I'm cooking something. Uh, with that being said, yeah, Savvy's back. That was the, the whole underline, uh, you know, between the lines message of this... Of this whole episode, Savvy is back, and looking back at your past is fun to come back. I don't know how to end this episode, so take care, make sure to eat a bagel. Um... Have fun.